<clears throat> Here we go. Three words for our next contestant. Adjunct. <laughs> Candidate. Stuff. <laughs> Tom Borthwick, everybody. Put your hands together for Tom Borthwick. First off, I want to say, uh, I wish the judges were behind me, because maybe I can get a couple of bonus points. <laughs> Sorry. So four years ago, I uh, decided I'd go out to Italy to visit my family there, get to know them. And they did the greatest favor for me. They took me everywhere, all the major cities. They were very proud of their country. And we were sitting around the table the night before I was supposed to go to Naples. Now, there's not much that I really knew about Naples in advance of going there, except for my, my grandmother stateside who would often say when she was angry, yelling at a political candidate on TV, she would say, va fa Napoli, which, you know, I always thought was a curse, but it means just go to Naples. I guess that she, she uses it like go to hell. Um, so, so that's all I know. And I know that my cousins are, are, they're Northerners and they don't like the Southerners, but we're going into Southern territory. We're going down to the south of Italy, Naples. And um, I'm, we're sitting around the dinner table, and there's, there's a, a problem with translation here. There's, there's uh, one little catch. I don't speak any Italian, and they don't speak any English. So uh, I'm, I'm sitting next to my cousin Maria Pia, and she, she starts tugging on my pants, and she says, and I, what I think is, give me your pants. And I'm like, th th this can't be what she means. And no, nope, she's still tugging away, and she's still using that phrase, give me your pants. And um, so I, I pull out the translation thing. Yes, she, she's asking me for my pants. And I, I have no idea why. And now she's getting mad because I'm not understanding. She's getting frustrated with me. So I, you know, I, I figured maybe it's some sort of weird tradition that I don't understand. So I stand up and I start unbuckling. And they, they freak out. They're like, no, 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 no. That, they, they wanted me to just go upstairs and change into something else and just give her my pants that way. You know, the normal way. I, what, do I, what, what do I know? So I don't understand why she wants them, and, and I go to bed, we wake up the next day, and she, she calls me over, and she gives me three pairs of my pants, which she had taken, and she had sewn pockets inside them. And I, well, I said, well, why are you doing this? And it comes out that uh, evidently in Naples, there are thieves that like to take razor blades and slice your pockets to get your wallet. So I would be protected because my, pant, my, my pocket would be on the inside, except that, you know, if I wanted to buy something, that would be really uncomfortable, <laughs> you know. So, you know, we finally get on the road, and it's uh, my cousins Roberto and uh, Isabella, and we're, we're, we're going down uh, the road to Naples, and Naples comes into view, and there's this green fog and haze over the town. And I asked them, well, what is that? And it turns out uh, there's a cholera epidemic. Um, and I didn't even know that happened, um, you know, maybe centuries. It sounds like something that happened maybe more than a century ago, or maybe in the third world, but cholera epidemic, and I find out why. As soon as we get off the highway, we're kind of weaving our way through neighborhoods to get to the place we're staying, and they're kind of blocked off by garbage because there's been a garbage crisis there for five years previous to my getting there, and we weren't actually able to uh, take a direct route. The GPS was all screwed up. They didn't account for garbage in the way. Uh, so I'm thinking, oh my god, this is a hellhole. What do I do? Uh, and So we get to the house that we're staying at, a very severe woman named Luciana, and of course you'd be severe in a town with cholera, um, but she, she comes out, she's very unpleasant, and she, she gives us the keys to her place, she leaves, uh, we get set up, we decide we're going to go to dinner. So we drive down the street a little ways, and we pull into a parking lot, and a man stops, uh, uh, stops the car, and he's in front of, of the car, and then I hear a tap, tap, tap on the window, and I look over, and there's a man with a machine gun pointed at the, at the window, and um, I, you know, I shit myself, um, fig figuratively, figuratively. And my cousins, they think this is funny, that I'm very pale. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. They're just guarding the parking lot so that nobody throws garbage in it. And uh, I, you know, what if somebody did throw garbage in it? What, would they shoot them? I mean, you need an AK for that? So that's, that was fun. So the next, so I'm, I'm miserable. I can't wait to get out of there. But the next day, you know, we're going to go to the museum. So we head to the museum, and uh, my cousin Roberto, he's got a bag. And in the bag is a gun. And uh, and he, as we're walking into the museum, he says to the security guard, una pistola in mia bigaya, okay? And the security guard goes, eh, okay. <laughs> I, so I guess you can bring guns into uh, museums in Naples because of all the, I don't know, thievery or whatever. Um, they take the Second Amendment very seriously over there. <laughs> so after that, we leave, we go to Pompeii. And um, you know, I pull in, and by this time, I, I barely even want to do it. And my cousin Roberto, he, gets his, he pulls out his gun, and, and he says, give me your wallet. Now, I know he's not robbing me or anything, but at this point, Jesus, like, what's next? So uh, 
I, I take out my wallet and I wait for the explanation. So he puts my wallet and passport on his lap and then he sits there in the car like this and he says, I will guard your wallet and passport while you go into Pompeii. And so my cousin Isabella and I, we wandered around Pompeii while he sat there with a gun brandished. Uh, so I, I can't wait to leave. We've got one more dinner to go and then we're gonna leave. So Luciana, the woman whose house we're staying at, she takes us out and at the end of the dinner she buys us all a round of limoncello. And I had never had it, I'm not, I wasn't as versed in alcohol as I am now. And, um, and so she, uh, she, she buys us this round of limoncello. I love it, it's great, I'm complimenting it. I'm like, oh, I, didn't, I don't even know, if, I've never seen it in America, I've never had it. And she got very offended that I didn't know anything about Neapolitan limoncello. And uh, so we, we, we go home and she walks into the house, she's, she's with us and she's got a pile of clothes in her hands and she starts putting them away while she's chatting with us and well, what, what's going on. And, and uh, my cousins explained that she had moved out of her house for two days so that we could move in and stay there. Uh, and she was living with a relative. And then she, she comes up to me and, and she's got a, a big bottle of yellow liquid and she, and, and she says, uh, Tomas, now America will have limoncello. And she gives me a big hug and a big kiss. And even though I wasn't pleased with half of the things that happened there, because Naples is you know, literally full of shit, uh, I know that at least its people aren't. Thank you.